Hey there, welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. Today we are going to replace a speedometer gear in the NP231 transfer case. Alright. This uh, rubber seal. Don't forget this, you need these. And a star. Before we get started, I'm going to explain to you just a little bit why we would be changing one of these and what does that mean. So your wheels, we're going to get down to the basics here. So your wheels have a diameter and a circumference because they're a circle. And that diameter is typically what we talk about in the off-road world. You know, I've got 31s, I've got 35s, I've got 50s, if you're crazy. All right, so that's your diameter, that's the height of your tire. Now you take that diameter, you multiply it by pi, you get your circumference. Your circumference is the outer profile of your tire, and that is directly related to how fast you're going. Now I have 31s, the outer profile or the circumference of my tire is roughly eight feet, which means for every revolution of that tire, I am moving myself forward eight feet. Now your speedometer is located on your transfer case, and it is spinning this little gear here, and as this spins, it's counting rotations. It's not counting speed, it's not counting whatever, it's not a GPS, it's counting rotations of your drive shaft. And it's got some constant that it multiplies by before it outputs to your speedometer for you to view and understand your speed. So when you change your tire size, each revolution is now either moving further or less than before, but that constant that the computer has or the cable, depending on what you've got going on, that constant stays the same. So your the distance you're traveling per revolution is changing, but your constant is staying the same. So what they've allowed us to do is put different gears into the transfer case so that way it actually turns a different speed and the revolutions are counted at a different rate to match your tire size. So for example, this is what I pulled out. This is a 37, I'm putting a 32 in. Now a larger gear is going to rotate slower than a smaller gear. And I was having it so that I was actually in reality going faster than my speedometer was saying. So I'm putting a smaller gear in so that I can have it output a more accurate speed. Now I got these numbers off of a chart on the Quadratech website. Quadratech sells all the Jeep parts, so their information is probably pretty reliable. I'll post a link to that in the bottom and you can go ahead and check that out. I'll also post uh, links to the parts that I bought, the O-ring and the gear on the Jeep Sheep website, which you will also find a link to in the bottom. All right, so under the Jeep, you will see the NP231 transfer case. So what we're looking at here, I'll try to stay out of the light. This set of wires here goes into a shaft which spins from the output of the transfer case, which is going to tell the speedometer as well as the computer the speed of my Jeep. And I'm getting some weird stuff in the rain. When it rains, I actually lose signal to this guy down here. And so I'm trying to figure out what is causing that. Now, I'm not entirely sure as of yet, but we'll come in real close here. See those bubbles? That can't be good either way. So we're gonna get in here and we're gonna try to replace some seals and uh, clean this guy up. And I'm also going to replace the gear. First thing you want to do is remove the electrical connector and how that works. And this is kind of a weird one, but it's pretty simple. This red guy here, pull him straight down and see he's up here and over there and he, it slides like this. It doesn't go up down like this, it actually slides. So I guess instead of down, it'd be side to side. So I pull it from the side. If you're having trouble getting it, maybe there's some mud or gunk in there, you can push over here at the same time. Push, now it's down like that. All right, and then, oh, I'm in, in my light again. So the connector comes off just like that. Got a seal in there and three pins. And you can see it's pretty nasty in there. So we're gonna definitely clean this guy up. 
All right, so how this comes out, we've got a retaining clip here and here. This one is for the electrical portion of it, and this one is to remove from the transfer case. We want to do this one. That is a 13 millimeter ratchet. Yep. And then you pull this out, we should be able to just pop it straight out. All right, so I got it popped out of there. Just, you pull straight out. Now, my Speedo gear actually fell off inside of here, which I can't imagine that's common, but it did. So you're gonna get an exclusive look inside the transfer case. Let's see if I can get the light up there for you. Oh, jeez. Look at that. So we've got ourselves some transmission fluid in the bottom. You got yourself a worm gear up here, and then that plastic gear that is what's supposed to be connected to your sensor, but it's sitting in a puddle of fluid at the moment, which I don't fully understand. Anyhow, I'm going to pull that out of there. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy. Now, I think I may have found our leaking problem. Is that Teflon tape? What on earth? Ooh, it's stringy. It's some kind of silicone that's been rubbed all along this edge and just stuffed in there. I guess they just did that and hope for the best. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that's probably not the best method of doing this. There's a good chance that's why we saw bubbles coming out of the transfer case. Huh. Fascinating. We are all clean. So my thought is this goes inside of the transfer case, which is spinning really fast and has gears and things. And so my thoughts are that this should be pretty clean. And I'm thinking you should do the same. So anyway, clean this guy very thoroughly. And now we're going to pop in the new gear. And then we're going to install it. Now I did find that there was an o-ring in here and then they had siliconed over it so that worries me a little bit but we're going to put in a brand new o-ring and then we're going to see what happens and hopefully it does not leak i'm assuming they just installed it wrong and yeah we're hoping for the best here the new gear. So this is a 32 tooth gear and along the edge here, I'll get closer. Oof da. There you go. Along the edge here you got 32, 38, 39.45 and 26.31. All right, when you're doing anything like this and it's crazy dirty, it's really important to not only clean the area that the seal is going to interface with, but also the area surrounding. Because as you're trying to fit this in there, you're going to get a lot of dirt and gunk possibly in that seal or even into your transfer case. So what I've done is the area surrounding right in here, I've actually cleaned it up as best I can to get some of the, uh, the dirt and sand away so it's not going to fall in there. Alrighty, we're going to, I'm going to dip my finger in there, grab a little bit of transmission fluid and coat the seal, and then I'm going to pop this bad boy back in. Alright, remember those numbers from before? So you can see here, 3238 is now in what is referred to in the repair manual as the 6 o'clock position or pointing down. And so now we have the 3238 for our 32 tooth gear pointing down and the retaining bracket is on and torqued to 10 foot pounds or somewhere around the 100 to 110 inch pounds. I chose 10 foot pounds because 120 inch pounds divided by 12 gets you two foot pounds. So that's where my logic is on that. All right, now you just connect your connector. Ta-da!
think so too. And she'll be coming back, coming back, coming back.